Okay. Welcome to the third impact session titled Made to Order Surgery, How 3D Printing is Revolutionizing the OR. It wasn't long ago that the concept of holding an anatomically correct model of your own heart in your hand was foreign. Today, surgeons are beginning to order replicas of patient organs to plan and practice the most precise procedures. Experts on this panel will discuss the clinical and market expectations for taking surgical planning to a whole new level. Moderating the session will be here on my left is David Kasich, who's the Managing Partner of Innovation in MedTech, LLC. David has more than 30 years of experience in the healthcare industry. Prior to co-founding Innovation MedTech, he served as Vice President, Content, and Managing Director of Medical Devices for the Elsevier Business Intelligence, um, now part of Informa Business, where he wrote extensively on the med device industry for monthly publications such as In Vivo and Startup. He's also a frequent speaker for more various companies and industry trade groups. Prior to Elsevier, Kasich worked for 20 years at Windover, Information, a, a company he founded with his business partner, Roger Longman. Okay. You got a long paragraph there. about these guys. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. So we do have a lot of time. We have a lot of materials to cover in a very short period of time. And basically, you know, about every 10 or 15 years, there seems to be another revolution that's coming to uh, the surgical suite. We want to talk about what is arguably the latest, which is 3D printing. We have on the panel uh, Dr. Jihad Kaouk, who is with the uh, who's with the uh, who is a urologist and, and, and kidney surgeon. Uh, we got Nizar Zine, who's uh, with the uh, Digestive Disease and Surgery Institute. Jacques Zanfeld, who is the present founder of Lazarus 3D Printing, and Carl West, who is with Cleveland Clinic and is an engineer. So I wonder if we could just begin with the physicians on the panel. Uh, and just give us a little bit of the state of the state of where we are today in terms of adoption of 3D printing. Are we right at the beginning? Is it a fairly routine uh, part of your practice these days? And, and what leads you to decide to do to employ 3D printing and, and what, when, it's, when is it not appropriate? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it's a routine yet but it is getting there faster than we think. And it's in uh, multiple dimensions. It's not just in the operating room. It starts from the time the patient, I think, know that he or she has a problem. So from that point, you can use 3D in education, explanation, planning, <coughs> rehearsal of the surgery, and maybe be part of the operating room suite. Is it primarily in your practice training tool? Yes, it is getting there. Uh, there are a lot of uh, activities. You can search PubMed, for example, and see that there's a surge in publications in this topic. Dr. Uh, it is definitely not a routine, but uh, um, you know, it is more routine in more complex surgeries. So it is it certainly 3D printing adds an edge to what we have in terms of imaging, but it's probably the edge is not sufficient in order to make it a, a routine day-to-day -day, um, uh, modality that uh, used for surgical planning or for a number of other things. I do think though, in, as Jihad said, in, when it comes to education, it may actually move a lot faster, uh, but uh, also it will, as we add new technologies, it will make its way into the operating rooms uh, in time. Carl, let me turn to you as the engineer on the panel, and 3D printing is pretty widely um, uh, adopted in, in other areas, other areas of, you know, of our society. What are the special challenges in surgery, in developing a workable 3D system? So, you know, everybody thinks that uh, it's, it's easy to 3D print something, a model. You just uh, download it, put it in the machine, and, and out comes this model. There's a tremendous amount of prep work that goes in prior to getting it to the 3D printer. It's taking the DICOM data, the patient-specific data, doing all the segmentation. And, and those are some of the challenges that we're facing now, why it's not quite as routine as what we would like it to be. It, 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 we need to, uh, there's the different methods or models that are starting to come out. That are there technology challenges that are obstacles that are limiting its adoption right now? Or is it, is it really more a matter of physician, of surgeons, uh, choosing to adopt? Uh, I think it's both. Um, you, you know, the, Nazar and, 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 and Jihad here, we've been working with them for years on 3D printing, and then Frank Pepe, last face transplant, we use 3D printing there as well. So, it, you know, I kind of 
PPE. Nazar said that you know it's more the complex cases we're using these models because of the time it takes to get to that point. But we're seeing these rapid advances in the technology that's allowing us to get this out there more mainstreamly. So Jacques, 